Hello and welcome to Math 1300. This is Nunez Community College. Today we will be looking at section 3.1. 3.1 is graphing functions. Graphing functions. Now we have seven basic types of functions that we have to be aware of what they look like. The first one that we have is going to be called a constant function. A constant function is going to be a horizontal line, a horizontal line, f of x is our function notation, and our f of x is equal to c, just being some number. f of x is equal to c. That's called a constant function. The second function we have is called the identity function. The identity function creates a 45 degree angle with the origin, and the ordered pairs are 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, negative 5 comma negative 5. This is the identity function and this would be f of x is equal to x because both the x and the y would be the same exact numbers. The third one is going to be the absolute value function. Remember, the absolute value is the distance from zero on a number line. The absolute value looks like a V, where the absolute value of one is one, the absolute value of five is five, the absolute value of negative three is three. So this is gonna be f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Then we have the quadratic function, quadratic, is where x is squared. x is squared. So therefore this one looks like a u, but it's called a parabola. It's called a parabola. And this one is one that we use a lot. It's going to be f of x is equal to x squared. f of x is equal to x squared. The fifth one that we have is going to be the cubed function. So instead of x squared, it's going to be x cubed. And that's called a cubed function. It looks like this. On one side, it goes down like the parabola, but since it's cubed, if I cube a negative number, it becomes negative. So this is f of x is equal to x cubed f of x is equal to x cubed. Then we have the inverses, which is first of all going to be the square root. The square root function. The square root function does not exist in the negatives. You can't have the square root of a negative number. So it starts at zero and goes off in the direction. It goes off in a direction to the right. Square root function. And then finally, we have the cubed root function. The cubed root function. And just like the cubed, where it goes down for the negatives, this one does exist in the negatives, looking like this. So it looks like the square root, except it also exists in the negative side. So for these examples, they're going to want us to graph the functions themselves. Graph the functions themselves. Again, this one here would just be f of x equals two would be a horizontal line through two. This one here, we'd have each number for x would be the same for y, going back and forth. But let's look at some of the ones and how we would graph these things. We are gonna make a chart in order to do it and our typical numbers that we choose for x is going to be from negative 2 to 2. For example, 1, it says graph f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. We are going to graph it on a coordinate plane. And again, in order to do it, I'm going to make myself a little chart, x and y, and I'm going to put the numbers down, negative 1, I'm sorry, negative 2 to 2. So what we're going to do here is we would plug this into the x. That's the absolute value of negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 
So my first point would be negative two, two. Negative one, I got the absolute value of negative one. The absolute value of negative one is one. So this coordinate would be here, one. This would be negative one comma one. Absolute value of zero is zero. So we have the origin, zero comma zero. Absolute value of one is one. So therefore this would be one comma one. And finally, the absolute value of two is two, two units away from zero. So that gives us our next point, two comma two. And again, just like we showed when I showed you the basic shapes, it makes the shape of a V. We have to pick enough points to get the basic shape down, to get the basic shape down when graphing. Example number two says graph, and this time it's a quadratic. So it says graph f of x equals x squared. Again, we said that we should know that the basic shape looks like a u, which is a parabola. We're going to prove it by looking at the chart. Again, from negative 2 to 2. So here we would put negative 2. We would square it. We're squaring the number negative 2. So it goes in parentheses. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So at negative 2, our first point would be at 4. Negative 1, we would square negative 1. That would give me 1. So my second point, negative 1, 1. My third point, 0. 0 squared is still 0. That would be at the origin again. 1 squared would be 1 and two squared would be four. So one comma one and two comma four. But again, it makes this shape that looks like a U, which is called a parabola. This would be the, um, the graph of a quadratic function. That's example number two. And then comes example number three. Example number three is graphing a square root function. Graphing a square root function, f of x is equal to the square root of x. With this one, I'm still making a chart, but I'm gonna avoid numbers that I know does not exist. I'm not gonna start with negative two because we can't have the square root of negative two. It does not exist. So I'm gonna start where I know this works, which is a zero. So the square root of zero is zero. So that's my first number I'm putting in. The second one I'll choose is the number one, because again, the square root of one is one. So that would be my second point. And I'm not gonna do two, because I don't know what the square root of two is. Not going to do three. I don't know what the square root of three is. So I'm going to skip to the number four because I know that the square root of four is two. And we'll put that down. Now, here I have enough points to give me what I need to make the shape. So I'm going to come over here, even though it's only three points instead of five. Zero comma zero, one comma one, two, three, four comma two and it makes the shape of the square root. So these are some of the functions and how to graph them into the shape that is made. Um, with this, we have to know the seven basic functions and we have to know the shapes. All right, that concludes section 3.1. I'll see you at the next one.